Hello future investors and welcome back to another weekly episode. I hope you're all having a wonderful bank holiday weekend. So now today I want to talk to you about investments. I hope your stacking and investment goals are going well this current year. Now I've recently discovered and started investing in a new investment vehicle for myself to diversify my investment portfolio. Now that is the S&P 500. So today I want to talk to you about the S&P 500 and I want to try and give you some information that you may not have heard before. Whether you're a new stacker or investor and you know absolutely nothing about the S&P 500 or maybe you are an, a seasoned stacker or investor, maybe you have even already invested in the S&P 500 but today I'm hoping I can give all of you a bit of information that will enlighten you to some of the benefits of the S&P 500 as an investment vehicle. So what is the S&P 500? Well, the S&P stands for Standard and & Poor and the 500 stands for the 500 largest companies in the US economy. Now, what is the S&P 500? Well, it's the world's most known stock index. The index contains, as I said, 500 of the largest companies in the United States. Those 500 different stocks completely cover all of the 11 sectors of the economy. So it's an incredibly diverse investment vehicle spreading out over all 11 sectors of the United States economy. So it's a very, very well diversified investment vehicle. Now, how long has the S&P 500 been around? Well, its origins date back all the way to 1923, and it only started with 233 companies. However, in 1957, it was updated to 500, and since then, it has stayed at the top 500 companies in the United States. Now, is the S&P 500 safe? Is it a high risk, a medium risk, or is it a low risk investment vehicle? Well, it's remarkably safe, believe it or not. The S&P 500 has never produced a loss over a 20-year holding period. I mean, that's just incredible statistics, isn't it? Over a 20-year holding period, it was never produced a loss. Okay, now let's talk about the returns and the yield on the S&P 500. So, as an example, if you invested $100 in 1990 and held it to this year 2023 so 33 years your $100 would have increased to £2,391. Now that may not sound like an awful lot considering that's 33 years but there's a couple of things you've got to bear in mind. That £100 has been invested and left alone to completely work by itself. You've not had to do anything with that money. You've not had to deal with any sort of um, extra work like property where you might have to deal with landlords or tenants. All you've done is invested $100 and left it to work for itself and work for you. Now, the great thing about the S&P 500 is the more you invest, the more you get on your return. There's a thing called compound interest and compound interest is basically interest compounding on top of each other. And that creates a higher balance in your account, which therefore generates you higher and more interest. So as another example, if you invested monthly using the dollar cost averaging technique, then you would have had $2,222 from your $100 investment back in 1990. So slightly less than putting in an initial bulk amount of 100, but nonetheless still very, very good. Nine times out of 10, it proves to be better as an investor to dollar cost average. Now, before I get onto dollar cost average, let me, let me explain what dollar cost averaging is. Dollar cost averaging is where you invest a consistent amount every single month. And what you're doing is you're not buying when it's high. You're not buying when it's low. You're buying on the same time period and the same value every single month over a long period of time. And what you're doing is you're sometimes buying it when it's high and you're sometimes buying it when the price is low. But over an average long term hold period, your dollar cost averaging will meet in the middle, hence the term dollar cost averaging. So sometimes that can be the best way to invest over a long period of time. And that is what most people will do when it comes to the S&P 500. Now, if you held the S&P 500 for a 10 year holding term, what would your yield be? What would your yield, what would your return be on that 10 year hold? Well, it would be a staggering 161% return on your investment if you held 
for 10 years. An incredible return. Sometimes you don't even get that on property. So it's a very, very good return on your yield. When it comes to precious metals, that's probably one of the only other things that has such incredible yields on a long-term yearly hold. Um, gold has increased in value from the year 2000 to the year 2020 on an exactly a 20 year hold by 630%. So gold, as we know, is a fantastic investment and protection against hedging against inflation. But when it comes to a slightly more different investment vehicle like the S&P 500, when you're investing in stocks, that is an incredible return on your investment. Now, since 1957 to the year 2021, the average yield has been consistently 111%, a very, very good average yield over such a long period of time. Now, maybe I've sold the S&P 500 to you. Maybe you're thinking, this sounds great. It's fairly, if not very low risk. It's a very, very good long-term holding investment for long-term hands-off investors. Now, what do I mean? by hands-off investors. Well, not everybody wants to be going out and buying individual stocks or shares because most people don't feel comfortable with that option. They don't know what company they should buy and when or why they should buy it because they're not sure about the future of those companies. So it's a bit of a gamble. Now, the great thing about the S&P 500 index is it invests all of your investment equally across those 500 stocks. So essentially, the more you've invested, the more you've got spread out in those stocks. So it's great for a hands off investor who doesn't want to be each month looking for a new investment stock to buy. They just want to say, OK, I'm happy with X amount of money going in every single month and I want it to work for me. I don't want to have to think about it. and I don't want to have to keep checking how the company like Tesla, for example, or Apple or Amazon is doing. You dollar cost average over a long term hold and let that money work for you. And it's smart. It works for you by investing across those 500 stocks. So you are hands off as an investor. That's what makes it very, very appealing, especially to new investors or maybe less experience investors. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, well, that sounds great, but how do I invest in the S&P 500? I've got no clue how to do that. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's actually very, very simple. You can either use a stockbroker if you're from the States, or if you're from somewhere like the United Kingdom, you might go and pop and see your financial advisor. If you don't have one, you can make a meeting with a financial advisor and they will walk you through the setup of opening your account with the S&P 500. Now, if you were to open up your S&P 500, you could also do it via the apps on your mobile phone. That's what most people do. You can use all sorts of trading apps on your Apple or Android device. And it's very, very simple to set up. You just need to provide the information on who you are and your bank details. And then what you want to do is you want to select the S&P 500. You want to make sure you select the right one for you because there is multiple options if you're from America. You, don't, you will probably want to select the VUAA option as that's the dollar investment side. Uh, whereas if you're from the United Kingdom, you may want to use the VUAAG option because that is the great British pound option. OK, but the, I think the most important thing is when you open up one of those those uh, S&P 500 holdings, you probably want to do it in an ISA because that means it's tax free, because the last thing you want is to invest all of your money over this period of time over a long term hold. And then when you want to take your your profit that you've made on your investment, hopefully you don't want to get taxed. So you can avoid that by selecting the ISA option. So overall, in a final summary, the S&P 500 for me is a fantastic new investment vehicle that I'm extremely happy about bringing in my investment portfolio to therefore diversify my investments. As we know, I've got precious metals, I've got the S&P 500, I've got NSNI premium bonds, and I've got property. So I'm very, very happy so far with my current investments, but I'm very pleased to add this new investment vehicle such as the S&P 500 to my portfolio because I feel like it's an extremely low risk investment that's good for a long term hands off investor. So overall, I think it's a very, very great investment vehicle. But as always, I'm going to tell you, I'm no financial advisor. Investment does have its risks, whether it's low risk or high risk. You have to remember that. So please make your own financial decisions with your own conscience and make a wise, informed decision and do some further research before you make any commitments. 
and always a massive shout out to the channel members 365 days of silver and the stack collector your support as channel members is greatly appreciated and the links for those two channel members will be in the description below so you can find their channels if you want to check them out so as always guys until next time i'll see you in the very next episode thanks for watching bye bye to watch another episode on future investments click the link now